Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Hiram Chodash, and I'm president of the college. And it is a thrill to welcome you to our very first Claremont McKenna convocation here in this spectacular Roberts Pavilion facility. We're so excited, and I just wanted to pause for a moment to recognize George Roberts, uh, David McGrubley, and the chair of our board of our trustees, and our other board members, all of the leaders, uh, faculty, students, staff, friends of the college who made this facility possible. Let's give them all a hand. We all express a special welcome to the newest members of our community, our outstanding class of 2020, our talented cohort of transfer students, new academic leaders, faculty and staff who join us this year. Let's give them a hand and special welcome. Thank you to Rabbi Shapiro for your profound invocation. You've just arrived and already managed to put your finger on the mission of our college. Deeper thought to greater action. The liberal arts for thoughtful, productive lives and responsible leadership in the world. Convocation calls us together to inspire our individual and collective responsibility to that mission. We celebrate our staff and faculty through their impressive milestones of service and impact. Professor Selig regales us with lessons from history about how to make history. And Nikki Blum, by his words and by his example, underscores the value of community, our community, in all we learn, in all we do. Professors Rents and Rosette infuse the occasion with high-spirited singing and the moving tones of the cello. We pause to reflect, remember why we are all here, what drives us, what we can and must learn from one another. Even with all the excitement of a new academic cycle, we face a series of steep challenges in the world. From the Middle East to our own streets, from our dry lands to our rising oceans, from our hospitals to our schools, and we look hard for ways to cut through our divisions. We try to seize the opportunities and reduce the harms of major forces. We can only alleviate these tough conditions and draw inspired solutions when we combine, as the rabbi taught us, the power of thought and action, when we embark on a virtuous cycle of learning and doing, and we can only do that together. Study alone won't solve these complex problems. An uninformed, isolated action often makes our problems worse. So how do we do it? We ask big, penetrating, disruptive questions. Questions that challenge our working assumptions and conventional theories, not just those of others. Questions that help us see through new lenses and grow through the challenge of learning new lessons. We then put our learning into practice. We watch it collide with the real world only to adapt new approaches from our trials and tribulations. We learn through experience. We cross disciplines and borrow and adapt ideas. Our challenges are too complex for us as individuals or separate groups to solve them alone. One isolated discipline or one ideological group will have at best a limited impact. We draw on this convocation to call ourselves together in this shared purpose, to develop the learning capabilities that the world needs from us. That's the purpose of this great faculty and their dynamic classes. That's the purpose of our Athenaeum. That's why we support research in our institutes and through their engaged thought leadership in so many fields. Our students, our recent graduates, our alumni all live this example recent graduates who have applied the study of abstract math and economics to put it to work on our lead equity trading floors, who take their training in politics, economics, and philosophy to develop clean water sources in East Africa, who combine their study of chemistry and management to consult for the world's leading tech and biotech companies, 
who take their coursework in literature and history and government and world languages and international relations and make path-breaking films, advise governments, start new companies, run for office, serve their communities, love their families, and yes, lead a good life. That's what our college is about. That's what CMC is for. None of us alone, no student, no professor or institute, no one president or dean can do all of this in isolation. We nourish one another. We succeed only when we do it together as a community. Our shared purpose is not a call for some sort of monolith, forced consensus, or a dominant political position. Instead, it's a call for mutual respect and for support through our disagreements, a challenge of our assumptions, a call for humility in what we think we know, the openness to be wrong, a commitment to persuade with facts and reason, and the grace to extend what Professor von Hallberg coined last year as the hospitality of error, even when we are justifiably upset. As we reaffirm our commitments to freedom of inquiry, speech, and association, let's do so with sacrifice, humility, and recognition of our responsibility to one another, to our profound interdependence. Principles without sacrifice render words empty of meaning. If we are to learn, we have to recognize what we don't know. If we are to develop confidence, we must constantly take risks. We must question ourselves. We must understand how we are shaped by forces outside our control if we are ever to have the chance of reshaping or leveraging them for good. If we are to cherish free speech, we must support and hear the speech with which, with which we most disagree. The most persuasive arguments anticipate opposing viewpoints. Free expression without listening is of little use. Diversity without engaged inclusion is but a surface, an image that glosses real barriers, a nice roof that hides the social partitions that divide, constrain, and can hurt us. If we are to have an inclusive community, we must learn from those we have not yet met and don't really know. We need to work and play and learn together to break down those walls. Yes, our self-expressed identities may spin colorful threads of humanity. Yet, if we don't learn to cross-identify with one another in shared purpose, we cannot possibly weave the cohesive social fabric we need in our society. If we are to challenge one another, we need su to support each other as well as teammates, colleagues, friends, as an extended CMC family. This is hard work. At times, we may disappoint ourselves and one another. We can learn from that too. If we are both patient and persistent in our practice, more often we will succeed. And succeeding together is fun, fulfilling, rewarding, inspiring. Our shared experiences bring us even closer together. And so we convoke. We reaffirm those commitments to our college, to one another, to ourselves, to those we care about, to the broader society. And we honor members of our community who have served this mission, the faculty, students, staff, students, alumni, families, and friends who both challenge and support us. So this morning, we set aside some special time to celebrate our great people, people committed to the values Professor Salek and Nikki Bloom will talk about later on, commitments to make a difference, commitments to make history as a community. We celebrate many faculty and staff this morning for their career milestones and for the ways they help us learn and grow and tighten our community every day. Their profiles are printed for all of you in the program. I want to introduce them briefly to you, and as I call each of their names, I would like them to stand to be recognized. First, recognizing 25 years of service, Professor Scott Gould.
Professor Gould's an incredibly devoted Keck physics professor and the architect of ACE, one of the most powerful interdisciplinary programs in the liberal arts. Cindy Gravon. Cindy, as you know, is our dedicated director of academic administration, whose work is so integral to our academic program. Without Cindy, no faculty member would ever receive tenure, and no student would ever graduate. <laughs> Professor Fred Lynch. The program says that Fred is an associate professor of government, but he's really just a sociologist from Pitzer posing as a CMC government professor. Uh, Fred Savers posing the most politically incorrect question, and his late kit, cat Fritz is probably one of our most uh, famous community members. Fred, congratulations. <laughs> professor Don McFarlane, Keck Professor of Biology and Environmental Science. And like Scott and so many at Keck, is the architect of one of the country's leading programs in interdisciplinary science, our 5C environmental analysis program, and is an outstanding scholar teacher. David Skinner. I think we're all going to wear David's uniform next year. Uh, David has made dinner for so many impressive people and has literally nourished our, the soul of our community at the Ath. Thank you, David. <laughs> Professor Kersey Black. <laughs> professor of Chemistry, and again, another one of our brilliant and dedicated professors of Keck Science. His name has been added to the fountain in Butler Plaza for, to recognize your 30 years of service. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> David Edwards, the other David at the app. <laughs> I believe David holds the entire building on his two broad shoulders and is incredibly effective with hundreds of students to set the stage for the magic of that program. And for his 30 consecutive years of service, his name will also be added to the fountain of Butler Plaza in front of Bauer Center. Congratulations. David. <laughs> Brenda Petrali. Brenda's our administrative assistant in the registrar, and she's served so many students, faculty, and staff over the years, and again, one of the most important academic units of the college. Congratulations to you as well. <laughs> Professor Jack Pitney. <laughs> Jack's our Crocker Professor of American Politics. His talented impersonations and class simulations, which have produced, by his count, five marriages, are nearly as famous as his insightful public observations on the US political scene. He's a busy man these days. For 30 consecutive years of service at CMC, his name has been added to the fountain in Butler Plaza in front of the Bauer Center. Congratulations to you. Jim. Lillian Ramirez. Lillian has worked so hard in our dorms and most importantly made so many memorable social contributions to our community and to our students. And for her 30 consecutive years at CMC, her name has been added to the fountain at, in Butler Plaza in front of the Bauer Center. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Professor Ralph Rossum. Our Salvatore Professor of Political Philosophy and American Constitutionalism. He's a leading scholar and has contributed so much leadership to the college. Director of our leading centers, three terms as chair of the department, and one as dean. Congratulations to you, Ralph. Thank you very much. Charlene Kyle.
Our employer, Charlene's our employer relations coordinator, and she too has served hundreds of students and alumni to help them realize their dreams and turn their learning into real world opportunities. Congratulations to you as well. Eduardo Valdez, who is not here, but let's give him a round of applause. He too cooks for Bon Appetit and has nourished many thousands of uh, CMCers there. Now, most remarkably, perhaps, for 50 years of service, 5-0, Professor Jerry Bradley. <laughs> Jerry, five decades is hard to fathom. Uh, and we are so inspired by your dedication to generations of students and your incredibly infectious, inquisitive nature as a key to your, your expertise in teaching and learning. Thank you so much for your extensive service. Uh, I wanted to go back just a moment to 30 years. I'm sorry, I passed over Professor Stephen Naftalin. Yes. He's our Pitzer Professor of Physics in Keck and yet another terrific ter teacher, scholar, and architect of another one of our special programs, our program in Management Engineering. Congratulations to you as well. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to recognize two recipients of our Exceptional Service Awards. They are Rosa Hernandez. Rosa? Rosa has taken care of Green for years, and her special qualities of personal warmth and hard work are so exemplary and meaningful for our students. Thank you, Rosa. Congratulations. And Victor Valdez. Uh, Victor is also not with us today, but is one of the key people behind the scenes at the AF. He's been a dishwasher there for 16 years and he inspires us all with his incredibly self selfless and hard work and compassionate spirit. Let's give our colleagues and friends a hand, all of them, for their example and their invaluable contributions to our community. Congratulations to each and every one of you on the beginning of an exciting year, and many thanks to all of you for joining us today. Thank you very much.